Uh, Professor Kelly, uh, in the last set of estimates, uh, you quoted a study uh, in which uh, a real-world study uh, of 3.8 million people where you claimed that the vaccine reduced sickness and hospitalisation, uh, yet these people were not actually studied uh, and autopsies weren't uh, performed on the deaths uh, and the study was not ran randomised. Uh, and very worryingly or concerningly, the study's conclusion was that it actually reduced all-cause mortality. Now, I find that an incredible statement to make, given that uh, the deaths in Australia rose from 162,000 in 2020 to 172,000 in 2021 to 190,000 in 2022. Uh, do you still stand by the findings of that study? Um, Professor Paul Kelly, the Chief Medical Officer, thank you for your question, Senator. So that, that was the study that was uh, performed by the National Centre for Immunisation Research and Surveillance, which has now been peer-reviewed and published. Um, what I talked about last time was, was uh, uh, just a preprint. Um, Mr Gould might come up uh, to assist with some of, some of the answers, but um, to your specific question, yes, I do still stand by that. that so, the so remarks you think the vaccine reduced all-cause mortality in regards to cancer and other things as well? Uh, the the all-cause mortality, and I'll, I'll, I'll pass to Mr Gould in a moment, but the all-cause mortality, I'm not sure if it was, if, if it was actually um, itemised by particular causes, but all-cause mortality was decreased. Uh, that is correct. But all-cause mortality didn't increase. It actually increased by 10,000 just in 2021. Uh, there's reasons for that, which I'll pass to okay. Mr Gould for. Yeah. Yeah. Forward um, to that. Sure. So, Dr Philip Gould, I'm the first Assistant Secretary for the Health, Economics and Research uh, Division. The study that, that you're referring to um, did find, um, found, found no um, evidence of increased mortality, all cause mortality um, associated with COVID vaccines. As you said, it did find um, a statistically insignificant um, negative uh, relationship between vaccines and all cause mortality. Um, but that was, as I said, it was, it was not statistically significant. Um, in terms of medical, potential medical reasons for that, uh, Professor Kelly might want to go into that, but there may be a uh, relationship with, with um, undiagnosed COVID um, being a, a potential con contributor to all-cause mortality. So that's one of the reasons which is, which is, which is um, listed in the paper itself. Oh my God, I forgot how much it sucks to be around everybody. I think I'm going to be sick all over cows. <laughs> 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 We all have to quarantine together for two weeks. You don't want to infect your families, do you? You were all exposed to a student here who was taken to the hospital due to COVID. Yes. Uh, we were there and Token was actually taken to the hospital because you guys shot him. Yes, due to COVID. If it weren't for COVID, all the previous teachers would have still been here, we wouldn't have been in the class, and nobody would have gotten shot. It was COVID related. That doesn't make any sense. So what was the cause? So you're saying that was the cause of the jump of an increase of 10,000 from 162 to 172,000 in so that, 2021? That, that's, then, that's then a separate issue. Um, so I think it's important to point out that what the study showed was that people who had vaccines were relatively less likely to die of COVID than people who did not have vaccines. And that was the key finding of the paper. So that was a relative um, comparison between cohorts of people who had and hadn't been vaccinated. That in itself doesn't uh, relate to overall mortality rates. Well, well, that's what I'm trying to get to, is what caused the increase in 2021 of 10,000 deaths, why there was an increase in 10,000 deaths, given that COVID wasn't in the community. You know, you can take the numbers 172 versus 162,000. Um, interestingly enough, the largest increase in deaths on a relative percentage basis were in New South, uh, sorry, in Queensland and Western Australia. It didn't have any community, COVID in the community throughout 2021. So yet again, and if you actually look at the ABS mortality figures, they jumped significantly in May after the, so that was about one month after the vaccine roll, roll, rollout stepped up. What was the cause of this significant increase in deaths in 2021 uh, notwithstanding that COVID wasn't in the community 
uh, throughout 2021 until you know late December. So um, before handing to Professor Kelly on, on potential reasons, just noting that a temporal correlation doesn't imply any kind of causation, so we have to be careful. Yeah, I accept that, yeah. but we had an actual increase here. We're not talking about a model. We're talking about real-world deaths, whereby real-world deaths increased by a significant amount. Yeah, and, and, and COVID wasn't in the community that year. And we would acknowledge that um, the ABS statistics showed both 2021 and 2022 that there was higher than normal mortality. That's part of their report. Um, the most recent uh, publication from the ABS covers um, all of 2022 as well as some of 2023. Um, but and as and I said, 2022 is harder to analyse because COVID was in the community and that jumped by another 20,000, so we went to 190,000. I just want to focus on 2021 where we had a clear period there where there was no COVID in the community, but we had the vaccine rollout. And there's a very strong temporal correlation between the vaccine rollout and the increase in deaths. Do you accept that there's a strong correlation? Um, in terms of the numbers that you're quoting, I believe that's correct that there was an increase during that period. But again, I would reject that, that the temporal correlation actually is, is due okay, to any and that's within your rights to do that. So yeah. given that there was a significant increase in actual deaths, what has the health department done to analyse why those deaths jumped in 2021? Yes. Because that's, you know, it was a 6% increase. I mean, that's a Sigma 6 event. The, the numbers in... We, we've been looking at the numbers across the whole pandemic, so it's, it's important not just to just focus on 2021. Uh, the ABS do a good job of um, listing causes of death um, and major contributors. They tend to be, um, have remained the usual suspects in terms of um, heart disease, um, dementia, um, diabetes and cancer. Um, but we did see in 2022 um, significant deaths as a result of COVID. Um, and I think it is worth saying here that of the roughly 20,000 excess deaths that the ABS reported in 2022, um, roughly 13,000 of those um, were either people dying from COVID or um, deaths which are associated with COVID. So of that 20,000, I mean, 13,000... Yeah, thank, thank you. And I'll just touch on that point because it's interesting because the World Health Organisation actually recommended that anyone that uh, was diagnosed with COVID uh, from a PCR test uh, should be coded to, to U07.1, uh, which is usually reserved for a laboratory confirmation. Do you think it was unorthodox for the World Health Organisation to change the rules for COVID, uh, whereby people were being co coded as a COVID death when the laboratory hadn't actually confirmed whether or not it was a COVID death? They were just relying on a PCR test. That, as yet, the TGA refused to give me the actual primers to indicate whether or not the COVID tests, how, how the COVID tests were actually determined. So, um, Professor Kelly might have some, some views on this, but the ABS go through their own coding process. So when they um, assign a cause of death, they independently um, go through medical clinical records. Um, if there's been a coroner's report, they'll and go through that as well. That's what I'm saying. The clinical um, records yeah. were changed by the World Health... The, the procedures for following clinical records were changed by the World Health Organisation for COVID to say In that you would, someone died as per laboratory determination, i.e. an autopsy, uh, but they're actually only relying on a PCR test, which has a much larger margin of error. Yeah. So Professor Kelly might have further comments, I'm not sure. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the, TC, uh, the TGA to their own, their own uh, to uh, talk about PCR. But, uh, Senator, I, I think there's, you're, there's a number of streams to your question here, if you, yeah. if you allow me to kind of consider. So first, firstly, on the, on the excess death um, element. Um, you're correct that in 2021 there was excess deaths, particularly in relation to 2020, and there's a range of reasons why that's the case, even in the, in the places that, as you said, there was no COVID. So um, there was a change in behaviour right across Australia in terms of 2020. Um, uh, people were going out less. Uh, there was no flu during that, period, during that year at all, pretty much, um, in, in some places that returned uh, in later years. Uh, and so we are looking in, into that in some detail. But, but, folk, folk, but just to say that that's related to vaccination, um, as you've said, we, sh we, we should be looking more, more closely at that, and we have. And the study that you talked about earlier that's now been published does that. It actually very specifically looks 
who has been vaccinated using the exact numbers from the Australian Immunisation Register and looking at matching that with ABS-related death, um, death numbers. That is not just PCR. ABS relies on a doctor writing a death certificate, which will take into account a range of matters. So that, that's the best data we have, and the best data we have shows that there is no evidence of an increase in death related to vaccination from all causes. And if you look at vaccination in relation to over 65s uh, from COVID, they are 88 per cent protected. Um, and that's, that's from the, the same study um, uh, in early 22. Well, well, it's interesting that, because right. in, in regards to the uh, Freedom of Information report uh, that was from the, from the actual health.gov.au, uh, it actually says there's a similar severe dis disease risk factors in, in vaccinated versus unvaccinated individuals. So contrary to your own uh, memos between your own organisations, I should add, but the question I wanted to get to was that given that deaths decreased in 2020 as a result of lockdowns in 2020, and in 2021, both New South Wales and Victoria had extended lockdowns. New South Wales had a, a, being the largest state had a three-month lockdown period. You would have expected to see a decrease in deaths, not an increase in deaths. So if anything, deaths should have decreased in 2021 as a result of the extended lockdowns in New South Wales in particular, and they didn't. It still increased. Yeah, so, I, I, I'll Senator Renick, yeah. you need to pose that as a question. This isn't an okay. opportunity so, to just so present why, information. Why, why are you not taking that into account when you're you know, refusing to take, you know, consider vaccines as a reason? You still haven't given me a reason why these figures increased, notwithstanding the fact that there were more lockdowns in 2021 uh, than 2020. So, so the ABS figures, as, as, as you've quoted there, um, look at a range of matters that are, are related to the death certificates that I talked about. Um, they don't look specifically at individuals or specific uh, risk factors other than what is, is related in the death certificate. So we have other, other sources of data which we've, we've looked at, uh, and uh, I come back to the best way of looking at vaccination and death. Uh, there are two, two ways, I would say. One I've already discussed in terms of the NCS paper. Uh, the other is the extensive work that is done in relation to vaccine um, uh, adverse event reporting through the TGA, and I'll leave the TGA to talk about that and the, the outcome. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.